Hi everyone, welcome to VTOX. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you're ready for your cervix because today we're gonna talk about the cervix. Yeah. So it's actually not really well shown here, but the cervix is just right here. It's right underneath the uterus um, and it's made up of mostly connective tissue. The cervix is the organ that mainly protects the upper reproductive system. So the cervix acts as sort of a gateway. It also secretes mucus, which is very important for lubrication of the vagina and also assists in fertilization. Aside from that, uh, the cervix is actually one of my most favorite organs of the reproductive system because it's very, very interesting and it carries out a plethora of very interesting reproductive processes that are frankly quite amazing to me. The cervix can actually change in shape and size throughout a person's reproductive cycle. So for example, right before ovulation, the cervix will become soft and large due to the increase of estrogen. Um, and then afterwards, it'll become kind of higher and harder because of the increase in progesterone during the ovulation cycle. So as a result, there's no one normal cervix because it can change depending on hormonal conditions, the person's lifestyle, and whether or not they have given birth. So the cervix is a really important fundamental organ of the reproductive system that is constantly shifting and changing. So now that we've gone over kind of a general overview of the cervix, let's jump right into the structure and histology of the cervix. So the cervix is split into four main areas, the ectocervix and the external os and the endocervix and internal os. The ectocervix is the area of the cervix that's visible through the vaginal canal. It has an opening called the external os that opens into the vagina. For people who have not given birth yet, the cervical opening appears small and circular. For people who have given birth, the opening appears more like a slit. The endocervix, on the other hand, is the cavity of the cervix that connects the internal os to the external os. And the internal os is the area of the cervix that opens into the uterus. So the endocervix is spindle-shaped and it tapers at both ends. It has slanting ridges called the plique palmate that interlock like a zipper to keep the canal closed. So moving on from the structure of the cervix into the tissue makeup of the cervix, it is also incredibly complex. And this is an area of the cervix that I personally find very, very interesting. The histology of the cervix is so beautifully complicated and requires so much to understand that it's truly a splendor of nature. So there are two main types of tissues in the cervix called the epithelium and the stroma, which make up the endocervix and the ectocervix. So the ectocervix lined with epithelium is split into the basal, parabasal, intermediate, and superficial layers, going from the deepest or the basal to the outermost or the superficial. So active mitosis or cell division occurs in the basal layer of the epithelium, which overlies the stroma. The parabasal and intermediate layers make up the prickle cell layer, which is a layer that consists of tightly bound cells the connections of which give them a prickly look, which is why they're called a prickle cell layer. The superficial layer is the outermost layer of the cervix, and it varies in thickness, actually, depending on hormonal changes in the female reproductive system. The endocervix, on the other hand, is coated with deep, cleft-like infoldings that lie underneath a series of mucin-secreting columnar-shaped epithelial cells. So, this is one of the most interesting parts of the cervix to me, is the area where the endocervix and the ectocervix meet. And this area is called the squamocolumnar junction, or the SCJ for short. And it's actually home to the transformation zone, which is incredibly interesting. So, the transformation zone is where the rectangular columnar cells of the endocervix change into the scale-like squamous cells that line the ectocervix. So it's where these small cells change and grow outward into very large, thicker cells. 
this process is constantly happening. So the location of the transformation zone varies between people depending on age. So in teenagers, the transformation zone may be located on the outside of the immature cervix, and for older people, it may be located further up within the cervical canal. Because the transformation zone is located more to the outside of younger people, teenagers may be more susceptible to infection like HPV or various sexually transmitted diseases, which is why it's always important to be careful when engaging in sexual intercourse. So the cervix has a variety of functions and it serves a variety of roles within the reproductive system along with having an incredibly beautiful and complicated histology and structure. So now that we've gone over some of those, let's jump into the various diseases that can impact the cervix. One of the most impactful diseases of the cervix is cervical cancer. So cervical cancer is not a spontaneous cancer, it's actually very slow growing. However, one of the reasons that cervical cancer is often undiagnosed or not caught until later on is because of the taboo surrounding reproductive health and that people might not want to talk about the symptoms of cervical cancer that they're having. Cervical cancer is often detected via pap smears, which is why it's very important to get a pap smear smear, um, and it can also be prevented by getting the HPV vaccine, which prevents the human papillomavirus from infecting those developing cells on the cervix, which can lead to reduced abnormalities and a reduced chance for cervical cancer. So as a result, there are several ways to prevent cervical cancer, um, and also various ways to treat it, but please talk to your physician if you notice anything abnormal. Another condition impacting the cervix is called a short cervix. While this is not necessarily a condition, it can be genetic. A short cervix is when a cervix is too short to contain a fetus during pregnancy, which is when premature delivery can happen because of the cervix being too short. There are various ways this can be treated, such as vaginal progesterone, a hormonal treatment that helps to strengthen the cervix or a cervical circlage, a surgery that also helps to strengthen the cervix. If you fear that you may be at risk for a short cervix, please talk to your physician. So in conclusion, the cervix is a very, very interesting and impactful organ of the reproductive system that serves various functions such as secreting mucus and protecting the upper reproductive system from various infections. It has an extremely complex and varied histology as well as a muscle structure and is very important to understand in order to improve the health of the female reproductive system in general. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of VTOX. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you next time. Yo! G Y N E C O L O G Y. It's a misunderstood field of study. So I'm gonna debunk some myths about the vulva and hymen. Show you all who's the real O G G Y N.